Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another race in our FSM F2 calendar and today we're here with the Spa Franchamps featured race and sprint race and as you can see on the screen right now for some reason Cesar 2 Wizard is going around on the wet tyres on a perfectly dry track. Now this is something at the time nobody really knew what was going on because it wasn't just him that done it as you'll see in the next clip you'll see that Joe Pilkey is out on those tyres, you'll see that Redoubts or Sam is out on those tyres, you'll also see, well I don't know if I caught it, but Failing Tomcat Noah came out on those tyres too, as you can see Cornish coming out on a sensible strategy on the softs, but yeah for some reason they all came out on the wet tyres on a dry track, we found out later it's because it's a bit of a, a bit of a hack towards the wet setups, but there's Cornish setting a second best lap of the session, I didn't catch Egon's lap of the 155.9, but Cornish does a lap on the soft. So now, and now Silly Fowl, who is Zach, he's my mate, who's taken part today in his one and only race, I believe. But he's just set a third best lap. And here we come out of the pits on our potential first lap and we hit the wall. <laughs> we hit the wall. We hit the pit exit. And then that means we just do a slow sit gear lap on our way around. And as you can see, M and JJ's, which is JJ, he's normally not racing in F2, but he set the fifth best lap because he just thought he'd stand in today because he just had nothing better to do and it was half time for him so he steps in he just does a lap a race for us this weekend and as you can see i'm mixing up my words but hey ho we always do that and here, here you can see we're seven tenths to eight tenths up into the middle sector but then you see towards the end of the lap we absolutely mess it up through this little section the understeery corner the most understeery corner on the f1 calendar in my opinion just before we go into no name I can't remember how much of this we'll show you, but I think it'll end after no name. But then we'll clip to the end of the lap, and we're eight seconds up because obviously we backed off on the previous lap. We come around the final turn. This will be our one and only lap. We come across the line, and we're going to improve to P5. P5 will go between the two Campos cars. And as you can see there, Failing Tom get, gets pole, Joe Pilkey second, Gunangma third, and then Sam in fourth, Egon, Cornish, myself, Silly Fowl. Ndidi and MNJs makes up the top 10 and as you can see there Cesar, Interlagos and Musical Rocket did not set a lap. Musical Rocket put it in the wall because he's a bit of a donut but he managed to find a way to put it in the wall in quali and it's a one, it's an easy, easy thing to do around here to be honest with you. I didn't clip it because I didn't catch it which is very disappointing but there we go. We jumped to the start of the race, we got five red lights. And we're away for the featured race here in Spa Franchamps in Belgium. And as you can see, we get an initial good start, but we get pinned onto the inside. And as you can see there, voice of crack. I lost my voice. Mid, <laughs> mid talking there, but it's fine. We get pinned and we drop all the way back down to P12. The only person behind us is Nididi, or Nididi, where however you want to pronounce that. But we're going to try and get a good run up here through our ruse. And oh my god, that was close to our teammate. That was extremely close to our teammate. You'll see it in the thumbnail of the video. But I can't believe we actually avoided contact there because that could have been absolutely disastrous and ended both the Union Virtuosi team's race for this one. But luckily, we do not make contact. And as you can see, we jump to the end of lap one. Well, mid-sector of lap one. We're behind in Diddy now. We're going to see if we can get a run on him. We're very, very good through this turn, so I think we can get a run. And we do. We come around the corner, get into a slip through. And hopefully we can make this move before the very tricky long left hand day here to the full speed one as well. But we decide to back out. We go wide as well. But then it looks like there's been a bit of a mistake there for him, did he? And he gets onto the grass. But also you can see Failing Tomcat and Cornish are both around. Two of the be better drivers in the, in the grid. Two of the people that could probably fight for the lead. And as you can see, we're jumping on board with what happened with Failing Tomcat or Noah. He tries to go down the inside. Or was that pronounced? I think it was. No, or was it? I don't know anymore. I've completely lost. He hits He hits the side of Sadar 2 Wizard. Gets onto the curb and then hits the side of his teammate, Ganagma. He goes around. Unfortunate there for Noah. There's not a lot he could do. He got pinched. And it was just one of those mistakes after he tried to go for a move. On into the lead and it just all went wrong and as you can see here oh, it was Joe Pilkey he had into the win and then, and then this Cornish he goes around the outside of the squeezed failing Tomcat and then just gets it wrong after trying to give the position back due to the illegal overtake and then he spins as well with a little bit of contact and as you can see there was some contact in front of us here actually on this clip 
But we, we're making the move on Evan JJ's and down the inside of him, nice and easy. And then the next up, you can see this musical rocket just in front of us with a whole collection of cars. Egon's there as well. And fingers crossed we can close that gap and maybe get into a little battle with you boys. But you never know with us. We're very inconsistent. We can either be an absolutely amazing driver one week and then absolutely terrible the next. But we'll see. I hope we can close this gap. But we've got to deal with Emin JJ's who hasn't disappeared behind us yet. But there's Egon. He runs a little bit deep. We're getting into the slipstream of Egon. And are we going to have a go? We're thinking about it. But we decide against it because this is a squeeze corner. If you go down the inside here and the driver in front does not give you space, you're going to go around with a little bit of contact. But we remain in P7 for now. And we're just going to bide our time and hopefully go for the overtake on Egon when it's a sensible time to do so. But we also always get a good run out of that corner, but that's the end of the clip. And there you are, Musical Rocket and Egon going side by side. We're just biding our time. We're seeing if we can get a good run and actually get involved in this battle. But they're having a nice little battle in front of us. We get a good view of it. Front row seat, as you'd say. We're going to break nice and early here. We missed the apex slightly. See if we can get on the accelerator nice and early. Musical Rocket loses the back end slightly. Egon is going to get in the slipstream. So are we. It's going to be a double toe for us down the big long straight up through Al Rouge here. And we do get a good run as well, to be fair. The POS has activated this lap too. And it looks like Musical Rocket could be in trouble here. Is it going to be three wide down the straight? Not quite, but we're going to get two moves in one here. We go down the inside of Egon. We try and squeeze him a little bit, give him a tiny bit of racing space. And we get both of them, and Egon loses the position there to use the rocket too, who is now trying to have a go around our outside. But we're not going to give this one up nice and easy. We're going to battle him as hard as we can possibly can. Because at the time, we was in a party together. And I'm not going to give him space. I'm just going to make sure that he stays behind us for as long as possible. So I know he's a quicker driver if he gets in front, and he will just pull away if he does get in front of us. So we're just going to hold him there as long as possible as Jeff tries to tell us to change strategy in this corner, which is very, very useful, as you know. And now, just to rock it onto the next lap. He is going to go down our inside here. It's going to be a proper easy move with DRS assistance. And he does go down the inside. We try not to fight it too hard. We made it difficult. We made him go offline, as I was taught by Cornish in a practice. But yeah, we made him for force him offline. But here we are, we're not going to give up on this one. We're going to go down the inside into the unsteery un corner. We obviously do use the track limits a slight there. But then he goes back down the inside on the cutback, and that's probably the last you'll see of Musical Rocket for the rest of the race. He's just going to disappear into this one now. And uh, we're just going to battle up with Egon, I, I believe. We're just going to keep Egon near us. But as you can see, Dom or Musical Rocket nearly lost it there. And we pit at the end of that lap because we've had enough of these guys. We want to get off them. We're into the pit lane. We take it nice and easy as we always do just to make sure we don't get a five second penalty for speed in the pit lane. We do it every single race. It's just Let's what we do. We don't hit the pit exit as well, which is absolutely a miracle. But we nearly lost the back end. We struggled to get any sort of acceleration down there. And as we cut to the end of lap 5, going on to lap 6, we are currently in P10, but a load of people are in the pits. Are we going to be anywhere near Musical Rocket, or is he already out of the pits? As you can see, he's already out of the pits. He has kept a distance to us. But we are still in front of Egon, which is huge, huge news. And as we jump to the end of lap 6 to start lap 7, there's a couple more people in the pits. Cornish is in, and we're in P6 for now. We're just going to go along and mind our own business now. Fingers crossed we can get some good points in this feature day. And as we can see, we jump, we jump to the middle sector and there's yellow flags. What's going on here? And we found out it's Cesar. Cesar 2 Wizard has had an incident. I would have put it in the clips, but I could not find a way to get it in. He obviously shows me the clip. I've seen the clip, but I couldn't get it into the video, unfortunately. But, yeah, he had a bit of an incident. He lost it and just... You know, it's one of those things, it does happen. It does happen. We just move on. But now we're at the end of lap 12. We've got Noah, failing Tomcat, right behind us. We know he's a quick driver. Let's see if we can keep him there. I don't know if we can. But he has gone in the pit. Noah the has pitted the onto the final lap. And we later found out that was down to the fact that the game was saying he hasn't done both strategies because he pitted so early. So he needed to pit again due to the tie rules in F2. You've got to pit after lap 3. And he pitted on lap 1 as we saw in the previous clip. But yeah, he, he got really unlucky with the tyre rule. We end up finishing P5, keeping Cesar behind us. 
And as you can see there, Joe Pilkey wins, Sam second, Gunagma third, Do Dom on Musical Rocket four, we're fifth, Cesar sixth, Cornish seventh, Egon eighth, Ndd ninth, and Noah failing Tomka after all of that does end up getting a point in the end in P10. He wasn't very happy, but it was one of those things that happens. And our teammate did DNF in that race too. But, as you can see, we just had a quick look at that. But we jumped to race two, and it's a full wet race, which is not a good thing. Especially for me, who runs a fully dry setup all the time. And as we get away under the under the wet weather here in Belgium, it's not a great start. We're, I mean, we were overly happy that we just didn't fit it. But something's happened behind us. I think it was Joe Pilkey. I think Pilkey was squeezed off the track, and um, he ended up with a tiny bit of damage. But, unfortunate for him, he, he ends up getting involved in incidents that are never his fault because people tend to drive into him. But it's just one of those things that happen. But Sam just went down the inside of us now. And uh, that's us down to P6. And a bit of a spoiler alert, guys. It doesn't get much better for us. And uh, going down the big long straight, we can see a little battle in front of us. We want to be involved. But on our dry setup, on the fact that we're also bad in the, in the wet, we just cannot get anywhere near either of the cars in front of us and it, it's just it's just a frustrating one we're watching them all have a nice little battle and we can't get any close we're trying our very very best to run the car in but oh my god egon dang dangerous rejoining the track there but we didn't say much about it we just move on but yeah it was a, a little bit a little bit on the borderline of what you can do there from egon i would say but here he is he made a mistake up our route and we get a better line, and we manage to go past it. This is going to be an easy move. We've got the momentum, we've got the speed, and we just drive around Egon after the mistake of our route. And as you can see, Noah is catching up with us. Failing Tomcat is getting a lot closer to us now. And we understeer through there as well. We've got no grip in the middle sector, even in the drive. We had absolutely zero grip. And now you can see Noah is the next car behind us. As we understeer, get a bit of a corner extent but that's because we wanted to carry as much speed as possible and we were struggling anyway so we thought we may as well just take the warning. We squeeze Noah a little bit, we, we make sure we leave him just enough room but we squeeze him to the track limit but then he does an absolutely brilliant overtake on us. I can't, I can't give him enough credit for that, that was an amazing overtake as Egon tries to go down our inside as well but we don't give him the space. But yeah amazing overtake there from Noah. But then, now we jump to the end for lap 5 and I can't remember why I've left this clip in, but oh, I can. And there we go, we go around and Egon hits us and we tried to turn ourselves around, saw into Lagos. And then in, in the end we decided to try enough to turn ourselves around, we had to at some point. And Didi had to go off track to avoid us, so I don't know if Didi got a track for this morning for that, but that should be... Uh, taken away if so and we even losing a position here to JJ too JJ down our inside and we we let him have the place there we didn't want to turn into him and spin him out so we let him have the place and now we're going to see if we can get that place back down the straight we've got much more acceleration because I believe we use gearing and he does not so he's struggling with um, acceleration speed but it's fine we drop down to fifth gear here we get into the slipstream I think we're going to throw this down the inside of JJ because we're not very happy right now. And we do. We go straight back down the inside. We get our position back, back into P7. But Egon in front of us has wing damage now. Egon has wing damage. And it was unfortunate because he couldn't avoid us, to be honest with you. Not a lot he could have done. It wasn't our, in our intention to cause a crash. We lost our back end. So at the end of the day, as you can see, Egon goes straight there through the most like scary corner in the F1 calendar. And we're right behind him now. We're, we're just biding our time to see if we can make a move on him as soon as possible. And we hit the curb on the inside, which is dangerous in these conditions. But we managed to hold the car. Now, we're going to get into the slipstream. We're going to see if we can pull around the outside. See if we can make a move on Egon as soon as possible. We back off, but we still don't carry enough speed yeah, through there. And oh my god. We have a puncture. We have a puncture. And that is our race done, guys. That is that is it. That is what we can do. Um, it's not great. We have a puncture. We're not the only one that's picked up a puncture. Musical Rocket, I believe, picks up a puncture as well in this race. I believe Sam does. I believe Noah did or something. A lot of the drivers, I believe Joe Pilkey did as well. 
a lot of people, Ganagma, everyone picked up a penalty, a uh, puncture. I don't know what happened, but the tyres just gave up on us. As we set a purple final sector on the final lap of the race, because we were very, very mad, we were driving with anger. But there you are, Pridouts win, Sam wins, Interlagos second, our teammate, brilliant result. Musical Rocket third, and DD fourth, great result for him. Pilky fifth, JJ sixth, which is an amazing result. Egon seventh, and Silly Fowl, who was an AI towards the end, was eighth, but that means Gun will get eighth. We'll get ninth. It's a disappointing one, but I hope you've enjoyed. If you enjoyed and you're new around here, please subscribe for more. I've been Chris12, LFC, and I will see you later.